Hey everybody, today we're gonna to go over the three ways to grow your business, or to grow your audience and your business. So, do you feel like um, you you maybe should be growing your audience, but you're just kinda of like, eh, I don't really know how to do that. If that's you, put hashtag grow below, because guess what? That is where Jill and I were uh, not too long ago, actually. Um, but today we're going to actually go over our top three ways that we're growing our audience. Um, <laughs> funny thing is, you got to remember to unmute your microphone when you're doing these lives because this is take two. So if you're feeling like, hey, I don't like lives aren't my jam, this didn't used to be my thing either. And you don't have to be perfect, you just have to get out there and do it. So just a little words of encouragement for you because, hey, we, Jill and I, we still screw up. And it's okay because we just get up and do it again and, and it's fine. But, you know, one of these days we may actually figure it out. So before we get into the top three ways of growing your audience, you, maybe you're sitting there thinking, hmm, but why do I care? Um, yeah, so let's get into that. There's there's three ways that I'm going to tell you why I think you should care if you don't yet. Um, one of the, the reasons why you want to have an audience is so that you can actually be engaging with them. If you're trying to run a business and grow your audience and grow your business, well, people's got to see it. And the best way to get people to know, like, and trust you is to be engaging with them. Actually be a human being and talk to people, even if it's online. So what you're actually doing is you're focusing on building a relationship, building a connection with them first. And it's not all about um, just saying what they need to hear to get a sale. It's can I build a good relationship and connection so that they become a loyal follower? That is where your business really takes off when you have people that love what you have to offer people that have love the content that you put out, people that love the engagement that you give back to them. Because if somebody comes to your your post or your video or your live and drops a comment, and so Jessica, I did see your comment. I missed it early on, but thanks for letting me know because I did the whole live and uh, had the mic off, so I'm back on here. But the other thing is you want to be intentional. Be intentional about what you're doing to grow your audience. Be intentional about what you're seeing so you don't get distracted on your social media accounts because they'll just put whatever they think will keep you on there the longest. One of the ways that you can do that, especially on Facebook, is there is a custom list of friends. I think it's like 30 or 35 people. So the people that you want to be intentional and interact with the most as you know, people that you are working on cultivating a relationship with, Put those people in your custom list of friends and you're gonna see all of their content first. So that's a great way to do that. The second way, reason why you wanna build an audience is ultimately you're in business. You want to offer promotions for your products or services. So as you do that, remember, don't be spammy. You're not gonna just put product offers five times a day onto your, your social media accounts. That's going to drive people away. That's going to repel them faster than anything else. So you want to be offering value, offering training, offering tips. You know, let them see the behind the scenes of what's going on, be engaging. And, you know, 20% of the time, maybe once or twice a week, you put out an offer. But what you did is you led with a ton of value first. And you're just letting people know what you have to offer because it still is a business. And, you know, if people don't know, um, you know, the one of our mentors, he says, um, the line from Field of Dreams, uh, if you build it, they will come. He says, that's a load of crap. And we agree because you can't just build something awesome and have these products or services and people just will, you know, throw down their credit card or, or cash to, to buy what you have. They've got to know that it exists first. You've got to help them get there first. 
So you can do that with curiosity posts with a call to action. You can do that through ads. Um, so yeah, and then the last one is remember that whatever you don't track can't help you. So if you're going through and you're posting and you're just like, oh, I'm posting enough. Do you, how do you know? Have you checked your metrics? Know your numbers and then you're gonna know your business. So make sure you're doing your tracking. So if, if you got something out of this, these three tips of why, and you're like, okay, yeah, let's, let's talk about building an audience now, go ahead, drop a one below, because we're gonna go ahead and do this right now. Um, so the first way of growing your audience is you can build an audience. When you build an audience, this is something that's gonna take time. It, it's gonna take commitment, it's going to take consistency, but here are some of the awesome benefits of building your own audience. When you are building your own audience, you get to be choosy. Now, why do I use that word specifically? Because you get to choose. Words mean things. When you choose who is part of your audience, you are actually building an audience full of people who are going to be engaging with you, who will become or already are your loyal followers of your brand. So that is a huge, huge benefit because it's from, from uh, a leads and, and prospects, they are like red hot leads for your business. Um, the second way to do this is you can borrow an audience. Now this one, you gotta remember when you borrow an audience, it's kind of a, again, the 80-20 rule. That 80-20 rule is all over the place, in life, in business, everywhere. So that 80-20 rule here is gonna say, well, 80% of the people are at least okay or raving fans of what this other audience it offers or, or what this other person offers to their audience. About 20% of them are just not very satisfied or even extremely dissatisfied. They have problems, they have challenges that they wanna be able to overcome. And if you can solve that for them, then they become your audience and your loyal followers. So a couple of questions to ask yourself. When you are looking at borrowing an audience, the first thing you have to say is, okay, well, who is even my ideal audience in the first place? You've gotta get clear on that question right there. And then the second question you're gonna ask yourself is, all right, if that's my ideal audience, who already has that ideal audience? when you can answer that question, now you know what audience to borrow. But you're not gonna do it in um, like a spammy, poachy way. You wanna make sure that when you go borrow somebody's audience, you are adding value to that audience. You are agreeing with, not always, you don't always have to agree. I mean, if you actually have a disagreement, that's fine. but but that you are adding value and, and giving praise for what this other person has built in that audience. And then talk about your own experience. And when you do that, that's done in a way that is adding value. It's showing people how things can be done. It's saying, yes, this person's audience is awesome. So for example, um, maybe you were interested in like Robert Kiyosaki and you're on one of Robert Kiyosaki's pages. You can add value, you can talk about the strategies that he's teaching and maybe how that's even benefited you and then talk about your own experience. And that right there, the people that like what you had to say, those people may choose to follow you, they may not. Other people may not have liked what you had to say and they just won't follow you. Guess what, that is not your perfect prospect in the first place. It's that 80-20 rule. But there's there's some of them that you can, you can pick up by borrowing an audience. So that's a great way to do that. Now those two ways are organic, very organic ways to do this. The last one that we're gonna talk about is buying an audience. 
Now, what is that? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're actually gonna pay, do paid advertising to buy and build your audience. One of the awesome things about this is um, you ha can have sometimes quicker results, especially over building your audience. So it's kind of a mesh of borrowing an audience and building an audience, but you get to borrow somebody else's audience and build uh, your audience of people that will become your loyal followers because you get to be choosy on who you're bringing in still. Now, a downside is it does cost some money and some people shy away from that saying, oh, do I have to spend money? Well, no, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to take advantage of a leverage system that can get you worldwide, then yeah, I would recommend it very highly. You know, as, as we get into this, there are ways that you can actually do this where you, you don't feel it very much. Now, for you coffee lovers out there, you're gonna like think this is blasphemy, but if you were to you know skip your Starbucks run, could you have as little as five bucks a day to put towards a, an ad to grow your business? To make a sacrifice in one area to grow for the long term. Now, I can't tell you what to do in your business, but I've seen people that do that and just making solid business decisions, sometimes realizing that they have to give up some things that they enjoy so that they can enjoy it a whole lot more later. So that's a great way. And, and another way that we have found to do this as you get into it, if you can create an offer that solves a different challenge for them, so maybe they don't go into your back end offer, but you have a, a less expensive front end offer then you can actually still get paid for even the people that say no, they don't want to, to buy your products or services, or no, they don't want to join your team. And when you do that right there, you can actually get to a point where you're breaking even on your ad spend. So all those people that are growing your audience is essentially happening for free, or you can even make that profitable. So just make sure that you understand how that process is working. Um, what do we do? What did Jill and I do? Well, we do all three. And like I mentioned, buying an audience is kind of a hybrid of building the audience and growing the audience. So just as a reminder, it's you can build your audience, you can borrow your audience, and you can buy an audience. But we do all three because we want to do the organic stuff as well as the paid stuff because with our ads, we get global reach. We, we have um, had people connecting with us in, we're, we're in Utah in the United States and we have people connecting with us in the UK, Ireland, um, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. That is just a little bit outside of our little bubble here in Utah. And so it, it expanded the reach far beyond anything that we could have ever done before. And that is leverage in your business to kind of amplify your results. So one last thing, just remember, build an audience, borrow an audience, buy an audience. And if you're sitting here thinking, well, great, I still don't know how to do it. Well, we have a free 10 day boot camp that gives some training into how you can start growing your audience of your perfect prospects, your ideal customers, so go ahead, go over to jillandlevihunsaker.com slash bootcamp, jump into that training, and you'll get that over the next 10 days, and just see what that can do for your business and moving that forward. So once again, jillandlevihunsaker.com forward slash bootcamp. The link will also be in the description of this video. Have a great night, everybody.